right, guys? Hey, um, hey, if you are here today for the very first time, if today's your first time ever at uh, Summit, man, I want to thank you so much for being here today. We are so excited to have you here, but I want you to know that today is going to be a little different, okay? Um, today is going to be a, a sermon-wise, it's going to be a little different uh, than what we normally do. Usually, you know, what happens on the news and things like that uh, doesn't impact what I preach. We don't really talk, I mean, I mean, world events, we reflect on things like that, but it doesn't really drive the Sunday. Um, but I think that where we are as a country and, and what's happened this week, with Dallas and the other uh, shootings and just the violence and the division that's happening in the country. I think, that, I think that with everything that has happened in our country this week, I just felt really compelled for us to pause and to talk about it. Um, because we need to talk about it. We need to know how God would want the church, you and I, to think about what's happening in the world right now. We need to know, we need to talk about how God would want us to respond to what's happening in the world right now. And, and here's, you know, what, um, what, I was, what I was thinking as I was just watching everything unfold this week. You know, last week, if you were here, if you weren't, then you can check it out online on our app or whatever. But last week, if you were here, uh, you guys remember what we did last week, right? Last week, we talked about and prayed for revival. And I think that this week we saw why our country needs it. Right? I think this week we saw why our country, we're reminded why our country, and when I talk about revival, I don't mean some planned thing. I don't mean some contrived thing. I'm talking about that our country needs a genuine, real, authentic move of God. That is what we need. And we, we talked about that last week, and we prayed that God would send revival in our church. And, 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 and this week, we, we saw why we needed that. Because here's what you and I need to know, and, and there's no other way to spin this. What, what we saw this week was evil. It was evil. I mean, this week, this week, on Facebook, I watched a man get shot and bleed to death. And I think a lot of you saw that too. If you didn't see it on Facebook, you probably saw it on the news. As I was going to bed on Thursday night, I was about to go to sleep, and I had CNN on, just watching the news. And all of a sudden, there were shootings in Dallas. When I went to sleep, three police officers had died. When I woke up, five had. And so we're reminded this week of, of why our nation needs revival because what we've seen this week is evil. And Summit, listen, God never intended for you and I to see anything like what we've seen this week. He never did. When God made Adam and Eve and he put them in the Garden of Eden, you remember what God said not to do, right? God said, don't eat of the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Right? And I hear so many people, I hear people sometimes say, well, the reason that God said don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is because God wanted to hold us back. No, the reason that God told us don't eat of that tree is because, listen, what you and I saw happening in our world this week, we were never meant to know. We were never meant to see these things. I think that our lives, our world would have been better had we never known these things could have happened, but here we are. I mean, I don't want to oversimplify things. I don't want to over-spiritualize anything either. And I could say a lot today, but here's, here's all I want to say. I just want to drive one point home for the next couple of minutes, and then I want to have us pray together. Um, I just want to drive one point home and it is simply this, that if there was ever a time for the church to be the church, now is that time. It is. It, if, if there was ever a time for you and I as the church to be the church that Jesus tells us we are right now in this book, it's right now. If there was ever a time for you and I to be the bride, the church that Jesus died for, it's, it's right now. It's right now. And so there's all kinds of 
there's all kinds of things that, that, uh, that, I could, that I could say, but now is the time for you and I to be the church that God wants us to be. See, we don't get the luxury of sitting back, waiting to go to heaven while the world hurts, while the world is torn apart. No, listen to me. There are things that need to be done. There is work to do. And listen, when I say work, when I say work, I, I don't mean work to go to heaven. We don't work to go to heaven, right? You know that. We say that every, every Sunday. We said it every Sunday for five weeks. Jesus didn't come to make good people better. Jesus came to make dead people alive. Okay? You and I are not working our way to heaven. We're not buying heaven off. We're not trying to get God's favor. No, Jesus died so that we could receive him and have a relationship with God. So when I say there's work to be done, I'm not talking about we need to work at being better people. No. That is not Christianity, and that's not what I'm here to do today. But when I say that there is work to be done, man, I hope that as you watch the news this week, and as you saw the way that people were interacting with each other on social media, I hope that when you looked at the world this week or over the past couple of weeks, or when you look at Orlando, when you look at what happens in, in Paris and, and San Bernardino, and we could go on and on and on and on and on. I just hope that when you and I look at that as citizens of heaven, there is a supernatural drive inside of us that says we have got to do something for the name and fame of Jesus. We've got to do something. We, we can't just sit in church and sing about it. We can't just sit in church and talk about it. There is work to be done. And so today we are uh, ending our series, Hashtag My Mission. This is not at all the sermon that I had written weeks ago, but I just changed it because I just really felt like God wanted, to, uh, wanted us to address this. But we are finishing up our series. So if you've got a Bible, I want you to go ahead and open up Nehemiah chapter 13. Okay? Go ahead and open up your Bible. Turn it on on your phones or whatever. Nehemiah chapter 13. And when we get to the end of the book of Nehemiah, where we are this morning, Nehemiah, it, Nehemiah the, the walls are actually built around Jerusalem. Nehemiah's left Jerusalem, but he comes back to Jerusalem in Nehemiah 13. And when Nehemiah comes back into Jerusalem in Nehemiah 13, Nehemiah is older than he was when he led the, uh, led the mission to rebuild the wall. He's older now. He's at least in his 60s. Some people even think that Nehemiah might have been in his 70s or 80s. And when Nehemiah walks into Jerusalem, Nehemiah sees, you know what, the walls are rebuilt, structures are going back up, but it, but it looks like people are walking away from God. Things had started to happen in the city of Jerusalem. People were, were, weren't taking God as seriously as they, as they were right before Nehemiah left. And so Nehemiah, this older man, walks into Jerusalem and says to himself, there is work to be done. And I, and, and, and I just want us to look at the last two verses, just so we can kind of get a glimpse. You should read it on your own, Nehemiah 13. It's an awesome chapter of Scripture. But I just want us to read the last two verses in Nehemiah 13 so we can get a sense of this man walks into Jerusalem and says, in the name of Jesus, there's work to do. All right? Watch Nehemiah 13, 30 through 31. He just kind of sums up what he does here in this last chapter. Thus, I cleansed them from everything foreign, and I established the duties of the priests and the Levites, each in his own work. And I provided for the wood offering at appointed times and for the first fruits. And we've said this before in the series because Nehemiah was written by Nehemiah. It's his journal. He says this, remember me, oh my God, for good. Nehemiah walks in and looks and he says, there is work to be done. And here we are, 2016, thousands of years later, I want to say to you today in Hazard, Kentucky, Summit Church, there is work to be done in Jesus' name. There are prayers to pray in Jesus, name, in Jesus' name. There are opportunities that you and I need to seize in Jesus' name. Because if you look at the world, I believe that the world is longing for what only Jesus can give. And so when I say there's work to be done, I'm not talking to somebody else. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to every one of us. If you are here today and you are a follower of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is alive inside of you, then I am saying there is work for you to do. There's work for me to do. 
And, and so what I want to do over the next couple of moments before we leave is I just want us to look at three scriptures. I want us to look at three verses. I want us to see really three things that I think the world needs the church to do right now. Three things that the world needs the church to do right now. And based off the past few weeks and months, it seems as if the new norm is now going to be just our normal. So these are three things that the world needs from the church, all right? So three things, if you're taking notes on our app, you're writing these things down. Here's the first thing that the world needs from the church. The world needs us to weep with those who weep. The world needs us to weep with those who weep. Can we all pause for a second? Because I see a lot of uh, self-made fans. Can you look at your neighbor and say, it's hot. It's real hot. It's real hot. Right? Why should you give? Because apparently we didn't pay the air conditioning bill on the forum. So you need to give. All right? The world needs the church to weep with those who weep. That's Romans 12, 15. Romans 12, 15 just simply says, we need to weep with those who weep. And listen, it doesn't matter what skin color someone has. If someone is hurting, we should hurt with them. If someone is broken, we should be broken with them. If someone is weeping, we should weep with them. It doesn't matter what their skin color is. See, see, as Christians, and we just need to, and we just need to say this today, and and I want to say this in fear that somebody might take what I'm about to say and just politicize it, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But see, as Christians, we need to recognize all people are made in the image of God, so all people matter. All people matter. In fact, the very first core value of Summit Community Church, does anybody know it? People what? Matter. That's a core value. All people matter. So, so it doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, blue, it doesn't matter. All people matter because all people are made in the image of God and we should weep with people no matter what their skin color is. We should weep with people no matter what their political party is. We should weep with people no matter how they might feel about issues that you and I feel strongly about. Though we disagree with them, we should weep with those who weep. When we see somebody weeping, our first response shouldn't be to politicize it. Our first response shouldn't be to, to simply throw stones. Our response needs to be more than a social media rant. When we see the world weeping, the church of Jesus Christ needs to weep with them. See, the way that you and I ought to look at things like, like that happened this week is we ought to look at them you ought to look at, at Dallas, and you ought to look at, 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 at violence in the world. You ought to look at those things that we saw this week. You ought to look at it through the lens of where we're going. Does that make sense? You, you ought to look at it through the lens of where we're going. Let me show you what I mean by this. Look at this verse, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 10. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Did you see that? We are going to a city with no racism. I will clap that. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God that we are going to a city with no racism. Praise God that we are going to a city with no injustice. Praise God that we are going to a city with no murder. Praise God that we are going to a city with no breaking news. We are going to a city where the God's people are with Him and He is with His people. And there is no more mourning, no more weeping, no more pain. The former things that we have experienced, that we have watched this week, they are ending. And where we're going, there is none of it. So when I look at where I'm going and when I look at where I am, listen to me, Summit, it ought to break my heart. Because it breaks the heart of God 
Well, what we see this week and what we see in the world, it breaks the heart of God. We say all the time, God, break our heart for what breaks yours. God's heart is broken, is yours. Or do you look at the situation as, oh, that's those people? <laughs> or do you look at this past week and you think, I can't wait till November? We need to get the right person in office. No, 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 no. I am going beyond November. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, it is better with a better city. With a better foundation. We are not first and foremost Americans. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. And our Father weeps and we should weep with our Father. Second thing the world needs from the church is this, the world needs us to love one another. John 13, 35, by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. All people will know that we are Jesus' disciples if we what? Isn't that easy? It sounds it. Think of, think of how simple that is. Listen, in a world that is divided, unity is real attractive. In, in a world that is divided and just seems to be torn apart by all kinds of different things, <laughs> imagine this with me. Imagine if in a world that is divided, they could look at the church and see that the church, no matter what, has each other's back. Imagine a world that's divided and no matter what, they could look at the church and say, wow, there's a people that loves each other. There's a people that forgives one another. There's a group of people that when they hurt each other, they confess it and ask for forgiveness. There's a group of people that never runs each other's names through the mud. When people see that you and I love each other, the world will look at it and say, something is up with those Christians. Something is going on. And Listen, I'm telling you, if we would do that, every church today would be full. Every church. There wouldn't be room in the forum if we would do this. Love one another. And I just want to say this, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, and you look at Christianity and you think, you know what, the reason I'm not a Christian is because I know some. I'm sorry. Right, church? I'm sorry. We should be doing this way better than we are. And the world needs us to love one another. And, and, and listen, that's hard. That's why I'm talking about a kind of love that only Jesus can put in your heart. I'm talking about a supernatural love that God gives you. We see how much we're loved by God, and all of a sudden, I can be patient with people that used to get on my nerves. I can forgive people instead of holding a grudge. All of a sudden, I, I'm loving people I used to not care about. The world needs us to love one another. Here's the last thing, and then we're done. Last thing, number three. The world needs us to go to the world. The world needs us to go to the world. Here, here's the banner over this church. Here's the banner over hashtag my mission. Here's the banner over what we're talking about this morning. If you are wondering, hey, why does Mark always tell me to invite my friends? Hey, why is Mark always telling us we need to be out making a difference? Hey, why are we always trying to serve? Why are we always talking about giving? Hey, why are we always doing this? Why are we always talking about changing the world? Here is the banner over it. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has not called his church to be a holy huddle that sings kumbaya until he comes. He has called us to be a missionary force of love in the world. He has. Every single one of us. Every one of us. Well, I'm not called. Are you saved? Well, then you are. Period. You just got called into in, in ministry. If you need one, I can go to my house, print you off a seminary degree if that makes you feel better. All right? If you are saved, you are called to go and make disciples. We've said it in this series. That calling looks different for all of us, but make no difference at all. The calling on your life Christian is to go and make disciples. Proclaim that you were dead and now you're alive. You were blind and now you can see. You were a slave and you have been set 
free. That is a message that 2,000 years later is radically relevant. And the world needs to hear that Jesus is alive, that Jesus forgives sinners, and that there is hope. So we go to the world, we go to the world broken hearted. We go to the world fueled by the love of Jesus because today there is no better time for the church to be the church that God tells us we are than right now. It is time. It's time. It is time for you and I to be the church. It is time to begin praying for that person that you've been thinking about that needs a relationship with Jesus. It's time for you to start praying for them. It is time for you to tell that friend that you've been thinking about sharing your faith with them and you keep giving excuses for why you shouldn't do it. And yeah, I know it's scary, but everything God ever calls us to do, it'll always scare us, it'll always cost us, but it'll always be worth it. It's time to tell them. It's time to invite those friends to church. It's time maybe God's been laying on your heart something that you need to start, something you need to say. There might be somebody here and there was a relationship that's been severed and God might be laying it on your heart. Hey, you know what? You need to try to reconcile that relationship. They might not come your way. They might not confess it what they did wrong. They might not forgive, but maybe God is laying that on your heart. It is time to go. Some of you, listen, I just want to be bold this morning. I just want to give you a personal invitation. You've been coming here for weeks and months, and here you are. And listen, I want to just say to you today, it is time for you to step up and be a part of the church and make a difference. So maybe today you didn't have any plans to stick around for the partnership event. You had other plans, but I'm telling somebody today, you need to change your plans. You need to come to the partnership event and say, you know what, I wasn't even going to come to this, but we've been coming here for weeks and months, and I want to say today, God, here's my life. Use me however you want. It is time for the church to be the church. It's time. It's time. And, and, and that starts, that starts with prayer. That starts with prayer. And so, like I said, if you're a first-time guest, today's different. Today's different. And last week we ended with prayer, but I just feel like today, this church, because this is the, past, this is the church that I pastor. This is the church that I serve. When I pray, I think about you guys. I love you guys. And so we're here today. And so I'm talking to us. I think that this church needs to pray for our country today. Our country today. Our world today today because our world needs Jesus. It really does. And so we do this from time to time. Um, but I'm going to have us all circle up and hold sweaty hands. And, and we're going to pray for our country. When I say circle, I know it's the forum and there's seats. So we're going to make a very abstract shape, not a circle, but an abstract shape. I want us all to join hands and come together and we are going to lift up our voices and pray for our world because our world needs God. All right? So let's all stand. And I'm going to come down. We're all going to join hands and we're going to pray. And In just a minute, we'll dismiss, but I think this is worth it today. If you're having to hold hands with somebody you don't like, you get to practice that love stuff we were talking about. It's awesome. All right. I want to publicly apologize to these two because I'm real sweaty. Morgan just told me I should have wiped my hand off. All right, hey, um, we're going to pray, but before I pray, I would love for you to pray. God hears your prayers just as much as mine and anybody in prayers in Jesus' name. So why don't we go to the Father in Jesus' name and lift up our country and our world right now because our world needs Jesus. So I'm going to give you time to put that into your own words and pray, and then I'll pray for us. Let's pray.
God, we come to you today, a church broken over our own sin, broken over, over our own need for, for Christ today. And we thank you that Jesus is our Savior, that he is our Lord, and he is what our world needs more than anything else. And so, God, I pray that you would wake up the church today. I pray that, God, you would drive into our hearts, every single heart, from youngest to the oldest, in this room right now, God, drive into our hearts that it is time for the church to be the church, to weep with those who weep, to love one another, and to go to the world in the name of Jesus to bring hope. And God, I pray for our land. I pray for our nation, our country, our world, Father. I pray that you would heal division and racism. Pray that you would heal accusations. Pray that you would heal systems that are, that are broken, God, and that need repair. Systems and structures that are broken and, and need repair that even lead to further division in our world. Father, I, I pray for our own hearts that this week you would help us to, to look at the world through the lens of where we're going, God, because where we're going, there is no pain. There is no death. There is no disease. And God, whatever's here that doesn't match up with where, our, where, where we're going, let it break our hearts. God, our world needs revival. We prayed it last week, and that's our prayer again today. Our world needs revival. We need you to wake us up. Please do not let us settle for status quo. Please do not let us settle for church as church. Please don't let us settle for religion and going through the motions. Jesus, we need a genuine and fresh encounter with you. God, that's what our world needs. That's what every school needs. That's what the government needs. That's what every home needs. That's what every mom, dad, child, teenager, grandparent, every person in the world, God, they need a fresh encounter with you. God, wake us up. God, open our eyes. It is time for the church to be the church. So Jesus, today, as we leave, show us what that would look like in our own worlds. What would it look like for us to be the church to be the people that you have called us to be. What would that look like? How could you use us to that end this week? Jesus, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's say one thing before you leave. Um, if you are here today, if you are here today, and you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, then do not leave this room until you make that decision. When you walked in, you got a connection card, and on the back of that card, there's a box that says, I gave my life to Christ. If you're here today, and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, you don't know what would happen to you after you die, I want you to check that box. I want you to pull me aside, somebody at our welcome table aside. Don't leave today until you get that decision nailed down. If you need to give your life to Jesus, do it today. All right? Do it today.